I'm Allison Soda, and it's time to get personal. Women traveling in India has become controversial. We've all seen the bold headlines warning women about the dangers of traveling in India from groping, staring, assault, or even more violent crimes. Now, as a woman, and as a travel professional, and as an India expert, I believe that it's important to have an open dialogue about such an important topic to dispel any myths. Because, in my opinion, there are many misconceptions about women traveling in India. So it's important to say that I cannot speak for every woman, nor do I intend to minimize the experience of another. Now, there are many laws and customs that are patriarchal, antiquated, and just plain harmful in India. And I understand the hypocrisy of Hindus worshiping goddesses, yet treating women as second-class citizens. This video is focusing on the travel experience specifically and not the general rights of Indian women. So, India is my second home, and I have traveled to the country countless times in various professional and personal capacities, solo, with groups, with family, with friends. And as a female, I can honestly say that I never felt threatened. Uncomfortable? Absolutely. Listen, India is a country of over 1.3 billion people, and it's not exempt from criminals, but I strongly believe that it's unfair to categorize an entire country under an umbrella of assaulters. The Indians I know are warm and welcoming and do not incite violence. I have felt more threatened on a train once from Rome to Prague and also when I lived in New York City. It's easy to become overwhelmed, and as a woman, traveling in India will require a heightened sense of awareness. So as with any international travel, I advise being aware of your surroundings and understanding basic social propriety. Common sense, always key. Do I recommend booking services in advance and having a network available for assistance? Yes, but does that mean if you book services independently that you're going to be the victim of assault? Absolutely not. Now, with the right resources and support system, I do believe that it's not just possible, but extremely likely to have a safe, comfortable, and life-changing experience. It's important to do your research and be informed, but I also caution travelers from being emotionally influenced by others' experiences. So you may have heard about the term Eve teasing, which is a form of sexual aggression toward women. It's named after Eve in the Bible. And the harassment usually occurs in public spaces and includes comments, catcalls, teasing, flirtation, inappropriate comments, sometimes groping. And although serious instances are rare, as a foreigner and a female, you will naturally attract attention. Now remember, for its size, India has a very low crime rate and is generally a safe country. So here are 10 tips to keep you safe in India and beyond. Check with your accommodations about the safe and unsafe areas of town. Don't venture out solo at night. If you do go out after dark, don't walk. Pay a few bucks, ladies, for a rideshare service or a taxi. Make sure your purse is zipped and wallets are in sealed pockets. The most common crime in India is pickpockets at markets, train stations, and bus stations. So monitor your belongings at all times. Ladies, don't enter a taxi or rickshaw with other passengers. And don't allow a driver to pick up additional passengers. Never share information on your travel plans or where you are staying. If you need to, lie. However, do always provide a copy of your travel plans, including hotel contact details, to your friends and family before the trip. Enjoy a cocktail or two, but don't lose your inhibitions. Being intoxicated may invite unwelcome behavior, and it's just a bad idea. Do your research and respect local laws and customs. This will help you avoid any unintentional cultural embarrassments or worse. Get comfortable with people staring at you. 
Most of the time, it's just out of curiosity, but it can feel uneasy. It's pretty common. Do your best to ignore it. If traveling by metro or urban train, try to sit in the woman only compartment to avoid men pressing up against you. In public spaces like markets and train stations, try to stay by other women. If you are being followed, step into a restaurant or shop and ask for help. Ladies, if you ever feel threatened, make a scene. Yell, push, and take out your cell phone to record. Indians avoid public shaming, and other locals will usually step in to protect you. You can also dial 1091 from an Indian SIM to reach the women helpline. And finally, be cautious but not anxious and understand the difference between discomfort and danger. Ask questions and connect with other women who have explored the same destinations. If there is a thread of commonality, ask the what's and when's and who's. Ultimately, the goal is for you to be confident in your traveling environment. Ladies, reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns. I would hate for you to miss out on experiencing India just because you feel unprepared or fearful. So I'm here to offer support and suggestions. So let's connect and I'll see you in India.